And we're back once again with Jimmy Stein, team expert for Bama Online. Jimmy, let's talk quarterbacks. I mean, obviously, this is the big concern that everybody's got, at least Alabama fans, or national media at SEC Media Days. Obviously, you know, quarterback is a big talking point for everybody because it's such an important position. In Alabama, for the first time in what feels like forever, uh, there's a lot of certainty at the position. It's not that they don't have options. Uh, but you know, compared to past quarterback competitions, it just feels like that we we really don't know where this position is going to go. We don't know who's going to be the starter. We don't know who's going to be the backup. We don't know how these guys are going to be utilized. And with the new offensive coordinator, you got offensive line that's trying to make improvements. You got wide receivers that are trying to make improvements. And and we both fully agree that they're both going to take big sizable steps. But it, it could all come down to quarterback play. And I don't think it, we've both mentioned. Neither guy has to be Bryce Young. Uh, it doesn't matter who ends up winning, or really any of the three guys. Whoever ends up starting does not have to be Superman. He's got to operate within the offense and get the job done. What are your thoughts pre, you know, going into fall camp? Obviously, things are going to change as we learn more, and we'll probably do another one of these videos once that starts to unfold. But for now, going into fall camp after an entire offseason, what are your thoughts on Alabama's quarterback position? I, I, I like all three guys. I think any of the three could win the spot. I don't rule out any of them. Uh, I, I think Ty Simpson, I agree with Jordan Rogers and Greg McElroy at SEC Media Days. I think Ty Simpson is going to ultimately win the job, but I don't think he's going to win it quickly. I don't think it's going to happen in fall camp. I think Milrow has a lead, and, and I'm sure Coach Saban would never say that or even admit that that's true. But I just look at the fact that Milrow went into the spring on, on day one and took the first snaps with the first team. That continued for 15 practices all the way to A-Day uh, and the two scrimmages prior. Uh, I mean, Jalen takes the first snaps with the first team. To, to me, that's, you know, that doesn't mean he's the starter. That, that's not what that means. But it does mean that Ty Simpson or Tyler Buckner has to move ahead of Milrow. And it hasn't happened yet. Uh, I, I don't know that it can happen in practice. I think it would have to happen in the scrimmages that precede the opening game or maybe in the game itself. But I, I think Ty will win the job, uh, for, and this is why. I think based on all I've seen, I'm including high school tape, I'm including scrimmages, I'm including A-Day, I'm including playing games. All that I've seen, in my opinion, Ty Simpson is the most talented kid. I, I think Ty is the most – he's the best bet to be a really good college football quarterback. Uh, and that's why I think it'll be Ty. I won't be surprised if Jalen Milrow is a starter early in the season uh, because he's sort of ahead. Some of it's just experience. Some of it's seniority. Some of it is his extreme playmaking with his legs. Uh, but I, I see Ty Simpson eventually winning it out. Buckner, to me, is a good player that's going to be a good college quarterback. I don't think he's quite as gifted as the other two guys. That's my opinion. I could be really wrong. If Buckner wins the job and plays great, couldn't be happier for him or for Alabama. But I, I would place him third in the horse race. I mean, I, I can't I can't definitively dispute any of that. Uh, I think you make solid points. Um, what I will say is that I've really tried to go in and, I mean, sometimes you overanalyze things. But at the same time, when you look, Alabama brought in Tyler Buckner. Uh, and I look and I say, okay, who was that a bigger threat to as far as their standing on this roster? Who who would have taken that as a bigger, um, not slight, I'm not going to put that on anybody, but who took notice to that probably the most amongst the current quarterbacks that were on the roster? And I would say Jalen Milrow. I don't think Alabama was nearly as concerned with Ty Simpson, you know, entering a competition that also includes Tyler Buckner um, you know, maybe as Jalen Milrow was concerned about adding that third player into the competition because he's an older player and he's kind of been the guy who has been expected. That's one thing that's kind of made me wonder, okay, what was the reasoning behind the addition? Uh, if you go, if you feel like that's uh, going to be taken as a huge threat by Jalen Milrow and you still add him, what are you saying? I mean, you're, you're risking losing Jalen Milrow. Was Alabama okay with that? I don't know. I, I can't answer that question definitively, but it's just something that you think about, and these are questions that a lot of people have. Uh, but then the other aspect of this that I really look at that I think doesn't play into Jalen Milrow's favor 
it goes back to the A-Day game or after the A-Day game when Nick Saban was asked about the quarterbacks. And he talked a lot about, you know, guys need to call their numbers less. We like the playmakers around our quarterbacks. Get the football to them. Allow them to make the plays. Do the standard stuff. Work within the offense. And with Jalen Milrow, who's going to call their number the most out of all these quarterbacks? It's going to be Jalen Milrow. And so I think with what Nick Saban was saying, I'm not saying that that was a shot at, at Milrow in particular. I think it was him telling both Simpson and Milrow that, hey, call your number less. Stop trying to make all the plays on your own. That's not what we're going to ask you to do. We're going to have a strong run game. We're going to have a strong offensive line. We're going to have a strong defense. You're going to have plenty of playmakers on the perimeter, uh, really at, not only on the perimeter, but at tight end as well. Get the football to the playmakers, distribute it, and allow them to go out there and make the plays. And, you know, I understand that Milrow brings a dynamic rushing ability that really neither of the other two do. Uh, Buckner is certainly up there and can make plays with his legs, and so can Ty Simpson. But neither one of them are the volume runners uh, to the same degree as Jalen Milrow. I don't think either one of those two guys could handle, you know, 10 to 12 carries a week in and week out like Jalen Milrow could. And that brings a wrinkle or an element to your offense. But if you can't handle the other side of it, which is something that up to this point we haven't seen Jalen Milrow be able to do. And I think that Ty Simpson's still coming along with that too. Like we hear about the turnover issue uh, in practice. That's something that you can't do. Jalen Milrow's obviously struggled in that area as well. Tyler Buckner has struggled with that when he's been on the field for Notre Dame. Uh, so just to, with this quarterback competition and where it currently sits, I'm starting to feel like that you're getting more. My prediction is is starting to lean more towards Ty Simpson and Tyler Buckner. Now, the problem that I have with that is that nothing on the field up to this point, Jalen Milrow has been the guy. You know, he's been the guy that was going coming in first all of last season. He got the start against Texas A&M all spring. He was the guy that was taking the first snap. Now, both guys were getting reps with the first-team offense, but it was always Jalen Milrow, or at least mostly from what we heard, he was the guy taking the first snap every day in practice with the first team. And that could be out of respect, but when you look at that, it's also difficult to say that's the, the guy that's going to finish third in this competition. So that's where I kind of struggle with this, Jimmy. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we don't play uh, – or Alabama doesn't play a game the first week of fall camp. But if let, let's say Alabama did – let's say Alabama did. You're going to practice uh, for one week starting about August 3rd, and then uh, roughly on, you know, August 12th, you're going to play a game. I, I would be confident in asserting that Jalen Milrow would start that game. Now, he probably wouldn't be the only quarterback that played in the game uh, because he doesn't have a significant lead on the others. But I, I think that's why I say Milrow's going to have to be beat out because he would start if, we, if Alabama was playing a game right now. Uh, and he's improved. I, I know A-Day, it might not have looked that way to some people, but uh, over the course of the spring, from what I hear, from what people have said, I, I think he's a better player. Most kids improve. I expect Jalen Milrow to be most kids. We know he worked hard over the summer. There's evidence of that, as if we were surprised. Uh, he is a hardworking kid. Nick Saban likes him a lot. Uh, so I, I think Milrow is going to be sort of tough to beat out. I, I'm, I'm an optimist, yes, but I'm generally an optimist based on fact or based on a reasonable projection. And I think there's a chance, Clint, that all three of these quarterbacks are capable of being the starter at Alabama and Alabama would win games with any of the three. I think uh, the tougher question is, okay, which of the quarterbacks get which of the quarterbacks give Alabama the best chance to win all of the games? That's what you're trying to figure out. Because I think I, I've been saying Buckner's third. I think if Buckner's Alabama's quarterback, they're going to win nine, ten games, maybe more, uh, even with Tyler Buckner. Uh, I, I think all of the quarterbacks would be good. Uh, one of them needs to be great. If Alabama wants to do things like win the SEC and play in the college football playoff, who's ready to be great? We'll find out. Yeah, and and I will say this. Um, you know, I, I think that the competition needs to be approached a little bit differently. You know, it's not about who stands out the most uh, because I think trying to stand out too much causes you to stand out in a negative way too. You're trying to make yeah. too many plays. You're turning the football over too much. It's who's the guy that's going to kind of say, okay, every day in practice, I'm going to make a commitment to do all the little things correct. I'm going to make good decisions. I'm not going to turn the football over. That I might see a throw that I think I can make, but you know, let me let me try to hold back a little bit. Now that can create issues if you get or lean too much into that. But I think as far as you know, if you're watching 
if you're Ty Simpson and you're, you're going out there and you're watching Tyler Buckner make decisions and, and try to fit in tight window throws or Jalen Milrow and they're continuing to turn the football over and you just say, I'm just going to play smart. You know, when I see it, I'm going to throw it, but I'm not going to try to force anything to, to force my way into this. Wow, what an incredible throw. This, this needs to be our guy. If you're making those plays, but you're also turning the football over, I don't think that's what Alabama's looking for. They, they want the play, sure. Um, but I think all of this is really in preparation for the SEC championship and the college football playoff. You've got a tough schedule this year. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but when you look at this, you know, Georgia with Stetson Bennett as its quarterback, it didn't ask him to do a ton in the regular season. You know, there was a couple of games where he was asked to step up, but really you saw his biggest impact statistically, at least once you got to the SEC championship, once you got to the college football playoff against Ohio State, he had to be huge in that game. Did he play his best game? No, he did not. But statistically, he was asked to do a lot and he threw for a lot of yardage and had some success and helped Georgia win the football game. And so with this quarterback battle and what Alabama is trying to do in the roster that it's set up, I think that they're, you know, it's kind of similar. And I think the person that that this sets up for the best on the roster currently is is Ty Simpson, because I think right now the inexperience is what's holding him back. He's got the high ceiling of all three of these guys. Uh, he can operate Tommy Reese's offense once he gets confident and comfortable with the game kind of continuing to slow down and him getting comfortable in a new offense. I, and so I'm going to stick my flag in the ground, and, and I'm right there with you. I think Ty Simpson is going to be Alabama's quarterback. I think he offers the most upside. I think he's got the 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 ability to to throw the football effectively, but also he's got the legs to extend plays. He can play a little bit about that backyard football. You don't want him doing that too much because I think Alabama is going to be a lot more structured offensively. Uh, but in those moments where you need him to, in some of those big games, uh, I think you can see him kind of make some of those plays and and make some game changing moments. So I'm going to go ahead and say Ty Simpson ends up winning the job as well. But I will say that neither you know Jalen Milrow or Tyler Buckner at this point. Uh, neither one should be eliminated from the competition. 